In the past, the reliability of information has always been questioned, and even more so in prehistory, when we often have limited sources. Much of our knowledge about ancient Egyptians is derived from depictions on temple and tomb walls, and from records on papyri. Iconographic and literary sources praise the pharaoh as a victorious military leader, with recurring references to soldiers presenting severed right hands of foes to the pharaoh in order to receive the so-called Gold of Honor, a prestigious reward primarily in the form of a golden collar of beads. Until recently, this practice was only known from tomb inscriptions and temple reliefs dating from the start of the New Kingdom onwards. However, the bioarchaeological analysis of human hands found in 2011 at Tel El Daba in the Eastern Nile Delta region provides a third source of evidence, offering unique insights and previously unknown details about this practice. The bones reveal information about the act of mutilation, the preparation of these body parts, and the individuals they once belonged to. This discovery raises questions about the embodiment of violence in the context of war and trophy-taking as a structured language of dominance. The hands were found in the forecourt of a Hyksos period Middle Bronze Age style palace in three pits. The palace had a longer lifespan, covering the major part of the Hyksos period. One of its main occupants seems to have been the Hyksos Kayan, whose numerous seal impressions were found in offering pits belonging to its earlier phase. The palace may have been used until the late Hyksos period, but may have lost its purpose when a new palatial compound was built further north. The smallest of the three pits contained a single fully articulated hand, and it could be dated between the early and the late phase of the palace. Two more pits contained the remains of three and eight articulated hands respectively, thus the right hands of twelve individuals. These findings offer valuable insights into the practice of presenting severed hands as a symbol of military victory and dominance in ancient Egypt. The condition of the hands found in the ground varied due to erosion, flaking, and cracking of the bone tissue, and their classification was based on the state of preservation. Anatomical markers identified all hands and single phalanges as being from right hands, with a total of 12 right hands, and potentially up to 18 if these six single digits each represent an extra hand. 11 complete right hands were found, with 8 placed on their palmar surface and 3 on their dorsal surface. The fingers of the hands were found in various positions, but there was no clear correlation between the position of the fingers and the placement on the dorsal or palmar side. The position of the hands could have been caused by taphonomic reasons or by deliberate placement, though no distinct pattern was observed. No cut marks or evidence of soft tissue removal were found on the preserved carpal bones, suggesting that these hands were precisely severed from the lower arm. This could have been done either by collecting them from recently deceased individuals, or by mutilating living people. The hands must have been soft and flexible when placed into the pit, indicating they were collected and kept for a period of time before being placed in the pit. The hands were buried while still intact and supple enough to flex passively under appropriate stress, which is affected by environmental factors such as humidity and temperature. The analysis of the specimens found at Tel El Daba suggests that they belong to adult individuals older than 14 to 21 years, but not reaching old age. The size and robustness of the hands point to the male sex of the individuals, except for one hand with a possible female 2D to 4D ratio. The bioarchaeological evidence raises questions on whether the hand mutilation occurred as a form of punishment or as part of an accounting and reward system following military victories. While there is no textual evidence of hand severing as a punishment in Egyptian texts, there are examples of hand removal in the context of tomb plundering. The pits containing the hands were found in a prominent location within the palace, suggesting that the practice was meant to be publicly visible and possibly part of a public ceremony. The hands appear to have belonged to adult individuals, mostly males, which may support the male warrior hypothesis. However, the presence of a possible female hand implies a less gender-rigid approach to reconstructing the procedure, 
acknowledging that women have also played various roles in military societies throughout history. The custom of severing right hands from foes seems to have been introduced to Egypt by the Hyksos, with the Egyptians adopting this practice by the reign of King Amos. The introduction of a specific hieroglyphic and a Semitic loan word in Egyptian inscriptions referring to severed hands further supports the Near Eastern origins of this custom. This bioarchaeological case presents a unique insight into the visual component of trophy-taking practices, with severed hands prepared and arranged for presentation in a public ceremony in the Pharaoh's palace. These hands served as symbolic currency for status acquisition within a system of values that celebrated warfare and dominance, as seen in other bioarchaeological studies from diverse contexts. In conclusion, the discovery of severed hands at Tel El Daba has revealed new insights into the ancient Egyptian practice of hand severing during the so-called Gold of Honor ceremony. The bioarchaeological evidence suggests that this custom may have originated in the Near East and was later adopted by the Egyptians, revealing a complex cultural exchange. Moreover, the potential involvement of women in warfare challenges traditional gender roles in ancient Egyptian society. This groundbreaking research not only enriches our understanding of the political, social, and cultural dimensions of ancient Egypt, but also highlights the importance of interdisciplinary approaches in unearthing previously unknown aspects of human history.